Hey, sports fans, it's Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is our program, Socialing the Distance. We're featuring Carlos Villarreal. Is that how I said, Carlos? Yes, yes. And he is the Pan Am champion at 1,500 meters. He's also a new member of the OAC on Athletic Club. Carlos, finally nice to meet you. Thank you very much for taking some time today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Nice, nice meeting you on this uh, nice Tuesday morning. Yes. All right, now, you're in Boulder, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, did you go to school in Boulder, or where did you go to school? You were in Arizona? Yeah, yeah. I graduated from the University of Arizona this past spring, so okay, just moved cool. up to Boulder here. Who was your coach in college? Uh, James Lee. Oh, um, gosh. I know James. What yeah. Hi, man. You're lucky. That's very cool. Yeah, I love Coach Lee. Him and I go, you know, way back. Freshman year, took me in under his wing, and yeah. Wow. Um, so tell me about your college experience. What was it like uh, going from high school to college? Was it a big um, thing for you? Um, at first it was, yeah. Um, so I didn't get into running until later on in my, you know, as a 16-year-old. Uh-huh. Um, I started my first cross-country season was my junior year. Wow. Um, and I quickly found, you know, success and my coach at the time, <laughs> Steven Shadler, um, you know, really did a good job of, uh, making, developing me, but also, you know, leaving some room for improvement, you know, for the next mm-hmm. stage. And that's really, um, where, you know, coach Lee, when he went to recruit me, he noticed, you know, this guy has a good, you know, finishing kick. And I think I can make him a really fast runner, which, you know, Arizona is only like 40 minutes from where I, uh, my hometown, you know, Rio Rico. Um, and it was a no brainer at that point. I, ever since moving to the States, um, it's all, it's been all about the Wildcats. You know, uh, I love the university of Arizona ever since I was little, went to all the football games, basketball games. So yeah, growing up, I grew up a wildcat. And when it was time for me to decide what college I wanted to run for, at that point, you know, it's, <laughs> I tried my best to, you know, keep an unbiased, you know, look at every other college and, mm. but deep down in my heart, you know, I'm a wildcat at heart. So I, cool. Coach Lee, Coach Lee, um, was, is a great coach, Coach Bernard Lagat. And I really felt like him and I, you know, could be, um, could work really well together and see what we can do. And the fact that I'm a wildcat at heart, it, everything just fit perfectly. So awesome. Um, how did you make the decision to work with Dathan and to become part of the OAC? Um, well, I, it's funny because, so we talked about Coach Lee. I talked to Coach Lee about it, and um, he actually got to speak with Dathan. Um, and I had told him, like, hey, you know, I we've been training together for, you know, the past five years. Um, I'm thinking about what do you think of Dathan Ritzenhine? Um, I want you to, I asked him like, could you, you know, by any chance speak with them and see what you think. And so, yeah, him and Dathan had a good conversation and he told me like, yeah, you're ready. Um, I think he'll be a great coach for you. And yeah, so everything, you know, started to click by that point. And that's when I decided that it was time, you know, to make that next step Uh and go under a different coach. Um, it was a tough decision, you know, because coming out of college, I was hoping to stay with Coach Lee until 2020. Um, I was going to graduate in the spring of 2020 and -hmm. pursue that Olympic mark and then race Tokyo 2020 and then go pro. Um, but obviously COVID hit and everything changed, but yes, Coach Lee did a great job of, um, you know, he kept me motivated. Um, and yeah, I'm really thankful for that. And yeah, going to Dathan at that point was a no brainer. Um, so right now I'm just really, really happy. I made uh, the right decision. Um, now you represent Mexico, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Mexico has a great tradition in distance runners. So like the first one that I knew about was in 68, Juan Martinez. He took fourth in the five and the 10 totally Mm -hmm. blew people's mind. I have awesome picture of him with um in uh, the 10 with uh, gamudi and um and then you know uh, arturo was arturo in that crowd was the ones where i got to really know and Mm -hmm. just you have a great tradition of distance running um tell me about the pan am games because i just think that's awesome (laughs) 
Um, yeah, so the Pan American Games, it's funny how I got on the team because I originally wasn't a part of the squad. Okay. Um, with the way the qualifying system works, you have to hit the Pan American standard and come in top two at the Mexican Nationals. Um, okay. But at the time, I only had the Pan American standard. And due to NCAAs, um, there was contrasting weekends. So I could either go to NCAAs or, you know, the Mexican Nationals. And being at the University of Arizona, I had an obligation to compete, you know, with my the sure. school that's paying for my education. And I couldn't go to the Mexican Nationals. So at that point, I was out. You know, they told me, like, you have to come here in order to earn your spot. And I told them, okay, well, I won't be able to. Um, so I was at that point, I'm out. Um, so yeah. And then during the summer I have the mark, turns out they only had one guy that had the mark. They call me and they ask, Hey, um, would you like to represent Mexico at the Pan American games? We really think, you know, you could be a valuable addition to the 1500 meter team. And I, it was at that point, it was a no brainer. I was like, yes, I'd love to, you know? So um pan american games was really fun i got to go out to mexico city train for a month in the altitude up there and then we headed out to peru where you know i got to meet a bunch of different uh athletes from different countries it's my first international competition so that was really fun wow yeah it was really cool just representing my country and meeting people from like argentina brazil um and then i was alongside a bunch of my friends from the usa like tyler day Joseph Tessima, Bryce Hoppel. Sure. So, yeah. you know, a bunch of friends from the good old USA. And it was fun because I, I was the only bilingual person there. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So I could, tr- I was translating. So the Mexican team and the American team were hanging out together. Yeah. And we'd like play ping pong and all that. So I'd have to translate back and forth between uh, everybody. And it was just a lot of fun. You know, the race um, worked out pretty well. Um, and yeah, it was just the, it was an amazing experience. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, Spanish in Mexico, is it different from like Spanish in Argentina or Spanish in Chile or Spanish in Ecuador? Yeah, it's just different dialects. Um, okay. Every, every country has their own slang. And I found myself because since I didn't attend, um, I only attended the Mexican educational system till first grade. Okay. Um, I find that a lot of my Spanish is just slang. I speak okay. very slang. So I fit in well. Um, yeah. Fit in well with the you know Mexican Spanish. But when it comes to understanding other pe- other country slang, it can be kind of dicey. Sure. Um, I remember I was, uh, I think we were playing ping pong and there was a team from Argentina that was there. And we were, we were talking and obviously like there were some words that I just, we would stumble on our words because I would yeah. say something she would she wouldn't know what it, you know what it was and yeah. then she would say something and i had no idea what she just said so we were kind of like <laughs> looking at each other like <laughs> um but yeah no it's uh there's it's 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 all spanish but yeah there's a lot of different you know um slang words that can get mixed up that is that's cool that's cool and congratulations on the pan am games um thank you so what, much what's the difference in training um so here's what i'm curious about so James Lee obviously had a, a, a coach Lee had an, a way of training you, working with you, mm-hmm. and Dathan obviously has a system that's much different. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, how you were trained in college and how you're training now? Yeah. So um, in college, a big part of Coach Lee's training was we wouldn't run very high mileage. Um, I would build up to maybe 75 at the highest during the base, maybe 80 for cross. And during season, I'd come down to maybe 60 miles a week. Um, And yeah, so it was very, I'd have one day off, you know, every week. Um, So, but sometimes I would just, you know, go out and jog three, four miles as my day off. Um, Mm -hmm. And but yeah, Coach Lee had a very high emphasis on very low rest. So my the for the workouts, they weren't very tough. So very, not very hard paces, um, but very minimal rest. For example, okay. the staple workout that he we would do would be maybe for we did three hundreds, so three hundreds at forty five seconds, but okay. the rest was only forty seconds between each one. Wow. So okay. it yeah. was, so it was basically 
rhythm, just get yeah. into a rhythm, you know, so sure. 45 seconds it, and then it'd become like clockwork, 45, yeah. 45, 45, sometimes dip into the 44s. Um, but the rest was just sort of, as soon as you'd finish, you would basically have 40 seconds to jog to the starting line again and then go wow. again. Yeah. Um, but there were sets of that. Maybe like we do eight of them, you know, four and four um, mm -hmm. versus um, the difference between that and the training I'm doing now. It's more rest, but very much faster for. Um, so, yeah, it's just a shock to the system. Um, very different. Dathan has me running a little bit more mileage. So mm -hmm. right now we talked about me running in the 70s. So that's including workouts. When I was with okay. Coach Lee, I would build up to, you know, 75. Yeah. Once workouts started, we'd go down to 60 sure. to be. Um, versus with Dathan, it's just sort of 75, and then we're including workouts and weights. Um, yeah. And, yeah, it's just – it's funny because I – when I first got to Arizona, it was a big change. So my body struggled to adapt right away, and I struggled, I think, like my first, like, six months I was there. Mm -hmm. And then – it, everything just sort of clicked. Yeah. Like once your body gets used to it, it clicks and you know, you start running well. Um, so when I got here, <laughs> it's funny. Um, I would tell Dathan, um, Dathan, these workouts are insane. Like how, how am I supposed to do these? You know, um, <laughs> because I was used to coach Lee's very, um, tame paces and but yeah. minimal rest. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been a big change, especially coming from coach Lee's to here. Mm -hmm. um given the altitude uh that's a that's one big factor that i'm not used to you know training in yeah, yeah. altitude um so yeah it's it's been a big change and i'm really excited uh for like the future dathan and i have talked a lot and the transition was definitely the biggest um uh, transition i've had mm -hmm. um whereas coming i some of my teammates most of my teammates come from a very distance based you know strength based program Sure. I come from a more middle distance base, you know, we're yeah. middle, I'm middle, I'm a middle distance runner. Uh, we train for the 800, uh, 1500 yeah. and I only run the 5k once a year just to, you know, for training. Mm -hmm. Um, but now it's, I'm in a strength based program and it's at first it's, it was tough getting adjusted to it, but now we're, sl I'm slowly getting the hang of it and cool. things are looking good. Yeah. Awesome. So tell us about the race. You did very limited racing this year. So yep. tell us about your races this year. Yeah. So um, we first started out. So we had this time trial in Colorado. Okay. Um, and I think that was early August. And okay. that was with me, Oliver, and Joe. Okay. Um, that race did not go well uh, for me. I. <laughs> it was funny because we were trying to break the four-minute barrier. And... It, it's funny because altitude just hits you like a truck. You feel great at one point, suddenly the life just gets sucked out of you, maybe in the third lap. Okay. Um, so my two teammates ended up running phenomenal, you know, 356 at altitude and 358. And I died so hard and ran like 408. And I was really frustrated after the race. And I was like, what happened? Like, I've never had anything like that happen to me before. And me and Dathan were talking and he was telling me, was like, dude, like the transition you've had is like insane. Like he told him, like, you just got to take it easy. You know, like things will click. I was like, I promise you things will click. Mm -hmm. And slowly the next race, mm -hmm. we went to Nashville. I ran 342. So I was like, okay, yeah, things are slowly coming around. And mm -hmm. then the next race I ran 358. So things, you know, things started sure. picking up and I started feeling really good about, about myself. And then I was, I talked to Dave, I was like, you know what, you're right. Like things like my body slowly getting adjusted. Um, so that was really exciting. But then my last race, um, since we had such intense training, my body started to slowly, you know, have it, it took its toll on my body. And um, I was struggling with, uh, I, I thought it was an Achilles uh, problem, but it's uh, post-tib. So okay. it's like right under my foot um, yeah. to where it would hurt to just push off. But um, so then I didn't run the 800 in South Carolina. Um, so, yeah, from there, we called it a season and now we're just building up uh one of the things that Dathan and I talked about which is actually uh, really important I think is uh so the base I did um to get ready for the season was for coach Lee's workouts so mm -hmm. I made the base to support the type of workouts coach Lee was going to give me sure. um whereas a different base is required for you know the type of workouts Dathan 
did. Yeah. So um, that's one of the things that we talked about is I just didn't have that foundation to support, you know, the more intense, different type of stimulus that mm -hmm. you get from training at altitude, faster paces um, versus I was doing very um, build up work just to get ready for 60 seconds uh, yeah. with minimal rest, you know, and, uh, and oppo as opposed to maybe 54 seconds with more rest, but at altitude, you know, so it's yeah, a different, yeah. different ball game, but yeah. So we're, really excited for the uh, next season. Now that I get to, I have a full season of, you know, to sure. build up and get ready for whatever uh, workouts and races get thrown at me. Um, do you see, or Dathan, are you talking about you doing more 5,000s? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, whereas I think it's going to be the same idea as it was, you know, with Coach Lee, where I'm going to do the 5,000 for training but yeah. with a more of an emphasis as like you can run it really well we run really well in the five and dathan dathan was telling me like you can you can run really really well in the five you're very strong it's only a matter of, we just need to get you there you know sure, sure. um it's like the five thousand doesn't need to be your main event just yet um yeah. but i really believe that you can run a really well you run really well in the five thousand and if you can run well in the five thousand you're gonna <laughs> fly in the 1500 meters oh yeah so yeah, so yeah. it's gonna be everything just comes full circle and yeah i'll probably be running a few more fives but not i, I still want to um go down and see what i can do in the 800 too what's your best 800 right now i ran 146.7 uh like three three years ago two years ago okay um okay. it was in that race where the collegiate record was broken by michael Saruni. Okay. i took second <laughs> wow okay. yeah so um yeah that was a fun race uh yeah i think it was like three two years ago um uh, maybe three but yeah it was it was a fun race what um um so for if the olympics happen next year or mm -hmm. you know world championships 2022 you'll represent mexico of course okay cool that's yeah. awesome that's awesome yeah now do you have dual citizenship not yet, no. Okay, um, okay. So I'm only a Mexican citizen at the moment, and I'm on. Uh, I'm a permanent resident here in America. Okay, but, sure. Um, in the future, I'm looking forward. Um, I've been talking to my parents about it and looking to get my American citizenship because ultimately this is probably where I'm going to live. Um, yeah. Just to you know get all be able to live in America, but still represent Mexico in international competitions. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, the what's important in a coach athlete relationship. So you've had, now you've had, you're dealing, you, you've got to deal with some pretty cool coaches, you know, coach Lee mm -hmm. pretty amazing. And now you have Dathan, you know, and I interviewed Dathan a few weeks ago. Um, it was my 12th interview with him just, you know, so I first time I interviewed him, he was 15. So I've got mm -hmm. to watch him kind of go through his stuff and he is so happy coaching, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I've talked to your teammates, they just talk about his enthusiasm and um, how much they enjoy just his approach and, and kind of the, the, um, the attention he gives you guys. Um, mm -hmm. what's, t tell people outside what's it like to be in a small professional running group? Um, it's, it's, really, it's really amazing, honestly. Um, when I first got here, it took me a while to realize that, you know, this is my job now. Um, and Dathan, Dathan's job is, you know, to be our coach, mm -hmm. um, not just, you know, there's more to just running out. There's more to running than just running. So outside sure. anything's going on, Dathan's, well, it's funny cause we have a joke within the team that he's, he's our team dad too. Yeah. Um, he's like, whenever you need anything, just let me know. You know, like <laughs> I only live like 10 minutes away. Yeah. Um, so, um, that's one of the things that I think was a big adjustment coming here. Um, because me and coach Lee were so close, um, whenever something was going on, I would tell coach Lee and, you know, we would adjust to it. Um, sure. so for example, if I was feeling under the weather or something, I would let coach Lee know, and he would adjust, you know, say the workout, oh, maybe we'll move the workout to tomorrow, or maybe we'll do this. We'll do that. So that now with Dathan, um, I, now I'm starting to realize, you know what, like, it's the same thing, you know, it's the same thing as coach Lee. It's just. Um, when I first got here, I was like, Dathan Ritz and I, and this man's run 12, 1256. You know, if I, uh, 
if I let them know, oh man, my foot's not feeling too good. Like, I don't want to be, I don't want them to think I'm soft, you know, like, sure. Uh, you know, so it's, it, it was just communication. I think that's really uh, important. And now that I, you know, Dathan and I get along so well, um, like I said, it's made this one of the best decisions I've made in a long time. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have me and Dathan get along really well. And I feel really comfortable now telling them like, Hey, this is, this is what's going on. Like, this is how I feel. Maybe um, I want to, be able to do this, be able to do that. And the communication with him and all of us is really great. Um, yesterday we were actually at his house lifting weights. And oh, cool. so it's, so yeah, we're really, you know, we're at, we're at his house all the time and yeah, it's just, it feels like a family, you know, it's, there's eight athletes, eight of us, there's four girls, four guys, and we're all, we all just get along. It's like, and it's like I said, he's like, he's like our dad, <laughs> you know, like our, he's like the team dad. Um, but yeah, you know, like I said, it's, I'm really excited for the future. You know, um, I think this team has so much potential um, and I'm really excited to see where we can go from here. So you're about 22, 23, 23. Okay. So yeah, <clears throat> um, I've asked each one of your teammates this question. How long do you see yourself competing? We get to see you at LA 2028. That's the goal. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Man. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's, that's the goal. So my, ideally, I would love to, you know, Tokyo 2020 is the number one focus right now. Sure. Um, and after that, I would love to compete in Paris and yeah. then give it one last go. And, you know, LA 2028, especially um, it being so close to my house, you know, it's so close to Arizona, close to my family in Mexico, too. Um, yeah. That would be, you know, amazing if my family, not just from the States, but also in Mexico can, you know, make the trip out to LA because it's, uh, that would be, that would be awesome. So that's basically what I, I'm striving for LA 2028. And then after that, see what else I can do in the sport. Um, if these legs have any more juice and keep running, you know, but if um, I'm getting worn out by then and, you know, it's just, that's the last, you know, big dance, then I'd love to continue coaching and see where I can do and trying to make a, trying to get other athletes to run just as fast, if not faster. Cool. There is a, one of your countrymen uh, is Juan Luis Barrios and yep. Juan ran 337. I've known him for, well, since he's about 18. Um, mm -hmm. And he went from the, he had the 1500 national record. I think he may still have the senior men's record. Um, then he had the 5,000, then he ran the 10. And then he ran a really nice marathon. He got down to 210. Um, yeah. But again, it took him over. I mean, he, he was running the 1500 in his 20s, you know, and I remember him in his 30s still doing it and then saying, you know, got to move up. Um, do you see yourself? Is Dathan, the Dathan you talk about? Yeah, you know, I really, my brain can only really say 1500 now. And I'll say mm -hmm. the 5000 is for training, but sure, somewhere down the road, if my body's still doing it. I'd love to check out a marathon. Do you ever talk about those things or? <laughs> um, so right now the, the furthest we've talked about is the 5,000. Um, okay, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then again, it's, it's one of those things as to, I started with the 800 and yeah. then I thought the mile, man, that's so long. It's four laps. So now I'm specializing in the 1500 mile and now we're talking about 5,000. Um, good for you. So I guarantee you once we're at the 5,000, you know what, why not the 10K, you know, see what these legs can do in the 10K. So yeah, I, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe six years down the road or seven years down the road, I find myself being a 10, five guy. And then maybe my last, however many years left, maybe I'm on the roads doing the half marathon. Who knows? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what's, that's what's really fun about this sport is that there's always, you know, oh, sure. you can always go up in distance as, uh, as you get older, the speed, gets out of your legs you know you don't have that same turnover anymore but the also the older you get the stronger you get because you have more miles under your belt you have this immense space that you've built throughout your career and that's what that's that's what you see happening with all these great 1500 meter runners they move up to 5000 for example bernard oh Dathan, he's awesome you yeah, know yeah. um all these guys that you know were phenomenal on the track suddenly are now in the road you know half marathon marathon so who knows? Who knows what will happen? Um, having Dathan, you know, who ran the marathon, I wouldn't be surprised if 
if I find it success in like the longer races, he tries yeah. to get me to run more on the roads later on in my career. And like I said, I'd be completely up. Uh, I'd be down for that. That'd be awesome. So we'll see Good. where it goes from here. All right. Tell us about your kick. Cause you have a, <laughs> you have a, you have a, I've pulled up some stuff off YouTube. I even know how to use that, which, you know, <laughs> I don't even call it the YouTube anymore. My, my son doesn't believe that I can you know, do anything but smoke signals. But anyway, I've watched you race. You have a pretty dynamic kick. Do, what's the perfect kick for you? Do you like to take off with 500 to go, 300 to go? Is it different with each race? Do you feel when you need to go? Talk to us about your finish. Um, I feel like it's different every time, depending on how fast the race is. I tend to, f- I, I see that's one of the things that I've always, I've always wondered like where exactly it came from because it, like my first time I made like a big kick was the very first time I ever ran the 1600 in high school Mm -hmm. as a junior. Um, there's actually a video, um, as to where that's when I first ever 1600, I ran 414 and ran like the fastest time in Arizona at the time. Wow. But this was me moving up from the eight first time ever running the 1600. I think my goal coach Shadler was like, just try to break 430. And I found myself going, you know, with the, leaders and i was like i'm gonna see what i can do and i dropped like a 55 last lap or something like that and wow so i yeah i don't know it's it it all depends on the race um bless you uh Mm i uh i tend to i feel like my kick works better in faster races okay um that's one thing i have noticed is i guess the faster the race goes the stronger my kick is at the end Mm-hmm. Um, because in a tactical race, everybody has that kick, Yeah, you know? Yeah, so then, yeah. um, it, it really comes down to how, what kind of pace the race is going out at. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, um, some of my best kicks are, yeah, come from faster paces and yeah, I don't know. It's just one of these, the, one of those things that just came out one time in my first ever mile. And ever since then, I was like, wait, if I did it, then I can do it now. And it just sort of, it just comes out by instinct. You know, I got to go now or, sure. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's weird. I, I can't really describe it. Um, okay. cause we never really coach it. Um, so I don't know. I, maybe coach Lee could tell you, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll ask him sometime when I see him in a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're down. You survived now for 35 minutes. You did great, Carlos. Uh, we're Thank down you. to the last few questions. Um, okay, here we go. What's the workout that you do? that tells you you are ready to race? Do you have a workout that when you do it, you go, man, I am ready to roll now. Do you have a workout like uh, that? Yeah, so with uh, with Coach Lee, it was always um, like short rest, but it was, we'd do 400s. Okay. So I we would do maybe down to like 58, but the rest was only maybe like 60 seconds. And okay. so... I think it was, I think one time we did five times 400 at like 58 uh, with only 60 seconds rest in between. And if I can string together, you know, five 400s at sub four minute mile pace with only 60 seconds rest in between, then I was ready to roll. Um, And yeah, that's in terms of college, you know, that's the one workout that, you know, once I do it, I'm like, you know what, I can string four of these in a row, no problem. So that was one of the workouts that really indicated that I was ready to roll. Um, one other one would be kind of the same idea, but it would be two hundreds. Um, coach Lee would like to, so I think that the, the, the toughest workout I ever did in college was 12 times 200 in 28 with 30 seconds jog rest in between. Wow. Yeah. So it was, uh, so it'd be, you start a different spot every time. Um, so as soon as you finish, you have 30 seconds to get back to jog a hundred meters and start again. Yeah. Um, and that was probably the toughest rate, uh, toughest workout I ever did. But right after that, I ran three fifty seven for the first time. So that was, uh, that, that was a good indicator. So yeah, it's, it's usually one of these, some workout with low rest and, um, pace work. So, yeah. Cool. Is there a workout you absolutely despise? Uh, tempo runs. Yeah. Okay. I, <laughs> then, One of the guys was just telling me that too. Who was it? Was uh, I was talking with Joe and I think it was Gordy Jordy. 
He was Jordan. telling me he's not a real fan uh, of, I think it was tempo runs. He said that, you know, you guys seem to be able to work together well. And, you know, one guy can handle intervals and one guy can do the, the tempo stuff. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so you have survived now 37 and a half minutes with me. Um, <laughs> you have, so I have uh, a lot of biling- bilingual um, viewers and readers. Um, would you, I want you to, the last thing I would like you to do is if there's a quote or an inspirational thing that you think about with running, but I'd like you to tell us in English and then I'd like you to tell us in Spanish. Um, one of the, yeah, yeah, I can. So, um, what I tell myself and I actually take this from my high school coach. Um, if you're hurting in a race, um, so if you're hurting in a race, odds are the person next to you is also hurting. So why not make them hurt even more? Cool. Cool. Can you say um, in Spanish? Yeah. So si te, si te está oliendo todo el cuerpo en una carrera y tienes un vato a un ladito de ti, a él también le va a estar doliendo. So más vale que le pongas más dolor y te vayas. Carlos, thank you so much. It's great meeting you. Um, I want to see you this spring when you get a couple PBs and I'll come up and say, hi, I'll be the guy with the big white beard. Okay. But <laughs> yeah, thank, you. thank you again, my Appreciate guest, Nathan. And again, thank you for your time today. Uh, this is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run with Socialing the Distance. We featured Carlos Villarreal. Uh, he is a new member of the OAC and being coached by Dathan Ritzenheim. Carlos, thank you so much. And thanks for thank your time. Thank you so now. much. Hey, sports fans, it's Larry Eater, Run Blog Run. Our program is Socialing the Distance. And our featured athlete this week, Carlos Villarreal. Carlos is a graduate of the University of Arizona. He was coached by Coach James Lee, who also coached Bernard Lagat. He's now coached by Dathan Ritzenheim at the OAC, and he's living in Boulder, Colorado. He is the current Pan Am champion at the 1500 meters, and he has the under 23 1500 mark for Mexico. What a great guy. A lot of fun talking to him today. Um, he talked about his running in high school, where he, one of his first times running the mile, he ran a 414, fastest time in Arizona at the time. And he used a 55 second last lap to cement the deal, which shows the young man has some leg speed there's some fast switch muscles there um and he's run um he worked with james lee for almost five years and uh with james he was doing workouts with short recoveries in modest time so for example a workout where you would do 345 but with also a 40 second rest what does that teach you timing the ability to close your eyes and run a good pace, uh, which is explains a lot, not only about how Carlos ran, but when I would watch Bernard Lagat and figure out how he had just so metronomic um, pacemaking skills. Um, and, and that's really a gift, and that's fascinating. When I asked um, Carlos what his, the workout that he would do that let him know he was ready to roll, it was five times a 458, with 60 seconds in between each. I asked him what was the toughest workout he ever did. 12 times to 228 with 30 second break each. My gosh, that is serious movement. Um, obviously, Carlos sees himself as the 800, 1500 time. But with Dathan, he's going to move to that five and maybe the 10. And he said, down the road, maybe he'll do a marathon, like his countryman Juan Luis Barrios. Um, we talked a little bit about Mexican athletic history. There's a long tradition there dating back to the 1968 Olympics with Juan Martinez, who was fourth in the five and the 10. He did better than any non-African. And um, it really started to bring in and gave some respect to Mexican distance running. And there's been some fine distance runners since then. Arturo Barrios is my generation. What a 
great guy. And Rodolfo Gomez and Jose Gomez, you know, those guys were tough on the track, five and ten. Uh, you don't see anybody tougher. And they were brutal in the marathon, too. They made Alberto work for his money. Um, anyway, uh, Carlos is, uh, um, uh, represents Mexico. Uh, he's looking down the road at possibly becoming a U.S. citizen. Um, his dream is that in 2028 that his family from Mexico and his family from the U.S. can cheer him on in Los Angeles, the city of angels. And I think that would be fantastic. He's excited about uh, running with the OAC, the On Athletic Club, sponsored by On Running. Uh, one of the newest companies that have gotten to the running shoe foray, and they're doing it old school. They're supporting an elite running club. They're doing grassroots events. They've supported a couple others. They support uh, Pete uh, Rea down at Zap. Um, and On is good people. Andrew Weeding, who has one of the best Instagram accounts ever, when he was an athlete, the stuff he put up just made me smile and chuckle all the time. And uh, Steve DeCoker, I haven't met Steve. I recall Steve from, uh, I think, Brooks days. But um, they're in a good place, and they've got support from the Swiss-based brand who's doing some good product. And it, um, it's tough right now. There's 49 running shoe companies out there doing their thing. And, you know, uh, some of them are doing it well and some are not. How do you get to the top of the heap? How do you get recognition? You got to invest in the sport. And I think what On has done, it's a perfect storm. They brought Dathan in, uh, a fine athlete, fine high school runner, college runner, um, American record holder at one time in the 5,000, um, run a 207 marathon, uh, run some pretty decent, I think 27 23 for the 10, um, and maybe a little faster. Um, and now he's a coach. So he's taken that wealth of experience, that life experience, that self-knowledge, and is working with eight athletes right now. Um, I've now interviewed seven of the eight. Uh, Carlos is the seventh. Uh, and again, what an enthusiastic young man. Um, he's got a great career ahead of him. I asked him how long he'd be around. He hopes till 2028, perhaps longer. And I think that's very positive. And I love talking to young athletes and hearing their enthusiasm. And he's had fantastic coaches. James Lee's one of the best coaches in the world at the University of Arizona. And now he's got Dathan Ritzenheim, who I believe will rise in the ranks and show that he can develop athletes and do it thoughtfully. And um, the athletes like him. They say he's like their running dad, you know. And the thing about Dathan is Dathan was around some great coaches and their attention to detail. Anybody can get you to run 80 miles a week. Anybody can get you to run 120 miles a week. It's how do you put it together, keep yourself healthy, motivated, and able to race at a high level. And that's the key. Coaches, as we've talked before, it's art and science. Um, they're coaches their confessors, their cheerleaders, their um, um, their friends, their good listeners, and their great salespeople. Um, if an athlete has confidence in your program, that's key. And Carlos suggested that he had a really good relationship with James Lee, and he's developing a real good relationship with Dathan now. So I think he's on the right track. I think we're going to see Carlos do some serious damage to Mexican national records and also represent his country well. And uh, I look forward to seeing him next spring at some races when things open up a little bit more. It's going to take a while. I, I just don't think we're all the way back till 2023, but each year should get a little better if we use some common sense. So this is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. The program is Socialing the Distance. We feature this week Carlos Villarreal who is a runner for the OAC, coached by Dathan Ritzenheim. He's the recent Pan Am champion at 1,500 meters, and he's the Mexico 123 national record holder. And he represents on running. So this is Larry Eater saying stay safe, isolate. If you're indoors, wear a mask. If you're outdoors and can't be more than six feet apart, wear a mask. Stay safe. Uh, staying safe and wearing a mask is being patriotic and caring for your fellow man. 
be patriotic, and be human. Larry Eater, signing out.